have some plant chores to do and I thought that I would bring you guys along with me. Um, I have had a few instances of either what I thought were pests or for sure pests with these two plants. Um, they have both suffered from a little bit of rotting. So I've had this croton, croton, croton. I hate trying to pronounce plant things because I all of a sudden get very... Rabbit, could you stop, please? I had this guy for quite a long time. Um, I got it at the nursery down the road. I had it for about five years, I think. And um, I read later on in my plant journey that these were difficult to keep alive and that people had a lot of problems with spider mites with them. Um, so of course that put the bug in my brain that this plant was just moments away from a spider mite outbreak. Um, so I saw what I thought were webs on it a couple weeks ago and um, we basically napalmed the whole plant. So I'm surprised that it has any leaves left. Um, we all know that crotons are incredibly uh, fussy and they don't like to be moved around. So it's been living in my bathroom on quarantine and today I'm going to finally unpot it out of this awful pot um, that does not drain and I have hated for a long time but just hadn't had a pot to replace it with. So now I have a clay pot which I actually think might be even a little bit smaller than this pot. So this might be a terrible idea. We'll find out. So this here is Philly D, the Philly Dendron, and I have had quite a lot of problems with him because uh, when I got it from the nursery, again, down the road, <sighs> um, it came very rotted, it was overwatered, and it was in a pot that wasn't draining very well, so like a fool, I put it in another pot that doesn't drain very well. I managed to nurse this plant back to life uh, a couple of times now, and it's definitely in some disrepair right now. It's been sitting on my bathroom floor. Um, once I saw a mealybug near it on a different plant, again, I went crazy and just coated this thing in, in rubbing alcohol and I don't even know how it's still alive. But here we are, it's still alive and it needs to come out of this pot before this pot kills it. So I'm going to take this one out of this pot and put both of them into some clay pots today. Here we have the byproduct of owning cats and plants at the same time. Also, just ran outside to grab this package, which has my slightly frozen looking Dr. Bronner's soap inside of it. I got this to use as a soap spray for my plants because I've been using Dawn dish detergent, um, which has a degreaser in it and you're not supposed to do that. So, And we're going to wash some plants today as well as repotting them. And I want to show you guys my begonias that I got from Josh's Frogs. So I'm now looking at this pot and thinking that this might be a terrible idea for this plant, but possibly a good one for this plant. So I have this little plastic container. I got this at the Dollar Tree, and that's kind of what I use to catch um, any of the old dirt or new dirt that I'm filling. Um, it's just nice and handy. So I'm going to fill some dirt in this pot and we're going to go from there. So if you're wondering what kind of soil I use, uh, lately I've been using this Roots Organic Soil. If you have a cannabis uh, growing supply store anywhere near you, go there and get your dirt because that's where you get the good stuff. And then sometimes I'll add in um, just a little bit of cactus soil. And I do that just to increase the drainage just a little bit more. Okay, so this shouldn't have anything too scary in it, I hope, but we'll find out. So when I repot things, I just kind of try to find a place to put my fingers where I can support the root base without crushing anything and then I sort of tip it and wiggle. Which of course it's not going to work very good because we have a camera. Guys, I did not get big enough pots. Oh, 
I'm going to cancel taking this Krogman out of the pot to put it in this other pot because it's definitely not going to be big enough. I'm thinking if it has even half the root growth that this thing has since I bought it in a much smaller container. Um, but I am happy to get it out of this pot because I really think this pot sucks. So I'm glad to have it out. I could see how moist all of the roots were. And I mean, I watered this thing weeks ago, so there is just no need for that. So even though this dirt is probably fine, I'm still gonna throw it out because, um, because I am. So do you guys have any plants that like, you know, you take care of because they're plants, um, but you don't really have any kind of emotional attachment to, and you don't really care about, and you're kind of sick of owning, but like no one will take them from you? That's how I feel about all of these fucking aloe cups that I've had for so long. Hopefully this one will live because frankly it fell over again for the 300th time, and I just left it there. I just left it there for a while because I'm so sick and tired of these plants and I can't get anybody to take them for me. This is another thing that's like in the wrong pot. I mean, it doesn't even need this deep of a pot, but this was just the pot that was laying around when I decided to break a bigger aloe plant down because it was just a whole bunch of different plants. These actually came off a much bigger aloe that I had. It was like. 15 years old, but um, the cat who is currently sleeping above you decided uh, to urinate in it for a few weeks while I went crazy trying to figure out why I smelled cat pee. So the next thing I'm going to repot, I'm mostly just going to put into a slightly bigger pot um, just to get them comfy are the begonias that I ordered from Josh's Frogs. Now I've talked before about the mystery boxes that Josh's Frogs does and um, how cool those were. I really enjoyed the foliage one especially. I think that was probably the best deal, the best bang for the buck that I got. But I took advantage of a coupon code that Josh's Frogs sent me after the new year and I had noticed that their begonia bundle was back in stock. So I don't have any begonias, so I was very excited about that. So I ordered some. Um, these definitely arrived in some banged up shape. Um, I will cut in some close up footage um, of both me opening it and like how they're faring now. Um, like this guy came with probably six leaves on it and ended up with only two viable ones left. But um, I mean, the two that are hanging on look great, so. This guy also lost quite a bit, and this one has a lot of damaged leaves, so a lot of them, yeah, see, here's one that's just falling right off. So a lot of them um, stayed on, but they don't look like they're gonna stay for very long, so I don't know how these are gonna do. I've had them under a light for a couple of days with my humidifier kind of going right near them, just letting them get adjusted to my place, uh, which is dry, <laughs> so. These are probably going to find their ways under some bells or something so that I can keep the humidity up. This was definitely not my best Josh's Frogs order. Um, it actually took them a week to ship it and I didn't get a shipment notice until after I emailed about not getting anything. So I don't know what happened there, but um, I've had pretty good experiences with them so far, but um, I'm definitely not gonna be ordering any fragile plants from there because I feel like not too many of the more fragile plants that I've gotten there have arrived in very good condition, but it is what it is. And it wasn't very expensive. I think I ended up paying like $13 or something for this whole thing after the discounts and stuff. So I'm gonna use these little dollar store terracotta pots. If you didn't see my Dollar Tree video, um, I will try to remember to link it in the eye. I have to do that on an actual computer, which I almost never am on, so that's why I always forget to do that, because I can't do it on my phone, YouTube. But now I've just got some extra soil in my little container here, and I'm not gonna need a lot because these are pretty small containers. I would actually probably be better off putting these in smaller ones, but I wanna give a little bit of space in here so that I don't have to repot them anytime soon. And I also don't want them to dry out really, really fast. I'm gonna try and keep most of this intact. I'm just gonna loosen the bottom a little bit, but I really don't wanna disrupt these very much because they had a very difficult uh, journey here. Josh's Frogs does include a heat pack, which is nice so that you know your plants aren't freezing to death 
the whole way here, but um, you know, it was long cold by the time I got it, which was only two days. So um, I think ordering plants in the mail is awesome though. I've got to say I've had mostly good experiences, both with Josh's frogs and on Etsy. This one here is the Begonia Autumn Ember. And some of these came marked and one of them did not, or whatever it was marked on, I couldn't find the name. This is my favorite one and I was really sad about how banged up this was because it's got these beautiful metallic purple leaves. It's called Begonia Harmonies Stormy Sunset, formerly known as Passing Storm. So sometimes Josh's frogs will have these little stickers and I'll just put them on the pot. Um, they don't stay there forever, but usually by the time they've fallen off, I'll remember the name of the plant. Are you a plant name person or do you not care? Respect either way. I do like to know the names and stuff of my plants. I, I just, I don't know why, I think uh, it's kind of fun to know them. So my plant people friends, how often do you find pests on your plants? I'm a little curious here. Um, and I've asked a few bigger YouTubers this question too and nobody's answered me yet, but I'm just curious because I wanna keep it really real on here. I'm not gonna try to be like a perfect um, YouTuber ever or social media person ever. But I'm very curious like how often people find pests. I feel like I find one of some species like once a month, you know, and, and I see people bringing home way more plants than I do and not experiencing the same thing. So I'm wondering like, am I just shopping at scummy places? Am I just unlucky? Like what's going on? Now, fortunately I always catch the pest problem very quickly because I'm all up in my plants grills like all the time. So this is the begonia that I'm not sure which one it is. So I'm gonna put a close up in here so that you guys can maybe tell me. So these are very young plants. So I'm really not gonna mess with the roots. Normally when I repot, I like to like pull the roots at the bottom apart a good amount, but this I'm just kind of gently doing it because I really don't wanna upset all these tender little baby roots. I'm also not going to water this today because the soil that's still on the root ball is pretty damp, so. Josh has always really waters their plants before they send them um, so that they're still damp when they get to you. Like even when I had the mail delay my order, it still came like moist, which I would think is better than dry, so. This is a begonia bolero. Oh, see, and this one's roots only went down that far. So, yikes. Normally I would get rid of a lot of the dirt that comes on plants from outside of my house because I've had so much bad luck with bugs, but um, I've never seen anything on my plants from Josh's, so I'm not too worried about it. This one has the furriest little new growths it's crazy looking like it almost creeps me out it's so furry sometimes plants are a little creepy am i the only one who thinks that i love them they're creepy and the begonia hugh mclaughlin don't you guys hate how much perlite looks like mealybugs sometimes i'm like traumatized Hey. If you guys would like a video about the lights that I use around my house to keep my plants growing, I've had a lot of success with a certain kind of bulb and um, I've also experimented with a couple of humidifiers and stuff. So if that's something that interests you guys, I would love to tell you about my experiences with a couple of these things so you don't waste your money on something stupid. Oh, since I couldn't repot my croton today, I'm going to repot something that desperately needs to be repotted. And I was gonna to try to wait till spring, but girls got roots growing out the bottom and I don't want anything to stress this plant out because it is my first Monstera Deliciosa cutting. 
So I took this cutting from my big mother plant, which somebody actually gave to me. Um, they had a gigantic one, and I guess they broke it into a few pieces, handed it off to a few people, and my friend gave me half of it. Uh, little did I know two years later it would be like this super hip on Instagram plant that everybody wants. Um, but I have one and it's enormous. Um, so if I have footage, I'll cut it in. But this is the baby that I took from it and it only had two or three leaves when I planted it. I'm Actually, I think it only had two. So these four right here are the newer growth. And I noticed when I was watering it like two months ago that there were these massive roots growing at the bottom of the pot already so now I took this cutting in probably September or something so it has not been that long it's January now so um, I'm gonna repot this while I have the extra pot today I'm actually a little bit scared because I really don't want anything bad to happen to this if you're wondering what the white stuff is that I have on top of this plant that's just a gnat killing um, a fungus gnat killing material that when they crawl through it it cuts them up uh, and I think it works Yikes! healthy awesome roots growing down here so I'm definitely gonna wiggle those a little bit and give them a chance to grow downward instead of along the pot I had this guy staked up for a while because when I planted him, he wasn't standing up on his own, but I'm thinking that might not be the case anymore. It certainly isn't on this side. I've also noticed that since putting a grow light up above my Monsteras, they're growing upwards instead of tumbling over the um, planter like they were before. So if you have a Monstera Deliciosa and you haven't just cut it and soil propagated it yet, I highly recommend it because it is so fast and so crazy how quickly they grow. Um, so, you know, I've already got this amazing plant, which people would probably pick up for like 30 bucks at a nursery. And all I did was cut it off my plant a few months ago. I also like to add little seashells and things that we pick up on family trips to our pots. So now that I've got my repotting done, I'm just going to mix up a little bit of mix to spray on my plant's leaves and just wipe them down, make sure there are no bugs, and um, just to clean them off so that they can photosynthesize perfectly. So you're going to want to get the right kind of neem oil. If you do use neem oil, I get this uh, from my fellow works at a cannabis grow store, so um, or cannabis focused high-end grow store. So. If you go to these kind of gardening centers, a lot of times they will have this kind of um, neem oil. It's the Dynagro um, brand, and this is good neem oil. It actually has all of the things in it that you need to kill bugs. And then I have my Dr. Bronner's soap, and you're going to use a little bit of soap, and that acts as an agent to mix the neem oil up within the water because otherwise it will just float to the top. So you don't want to come to me for mixing ratios because, honestly, I have no idea. I just do like a little drop or two of soap and a little blip of neem oil because I have this tiny little um, bottle that would be a lot smarter to mix in bigger quantities, but you know, I don't like to do things the easy way. So I will always just do a little bit of both. And then I fill it with distilled water. So a good rule of thumb is if you keep seeing the neem oil float right to the top, you don't have enough soap in your mix. You can also use just a soap and water solution to clean off your plants and check them for bugs. I just wanted to be a little extra today. I have a microfiber cloth again from the Dollar Tree. So if you're treating for bugs like you just saw some bugs or you're doing your next week later uh, retreatment, you'll want to do this like in a tub so that you can really, you know, soak all the leaves down. 
but I'm just doing kind of a clean and a maintenance. And you want to always get the undersides of the leaves because that tends to be where bugs hang out. Also, you should probably use neem oil outside because it is there's some fumes involved and my cat really doesn't like them so he's going to wake up in a second and be pissed off at me. So then you just want to use your hand to support the leaves and wipe them off. Um, be very gentle. You can damage leaves on just about every plant doing this. Some plants are a little tougher than others. So thanks for joining me friends while well, I did some plant chores and I will see you guys really soon in the next video and um, please let me know what else you would like to see. Do you have questions for me? Do you want to check out my plants? Uh, what do you want to say? Let me know. Thanks. <laughs>